Psychologists have told us a lot about behaviour, but can we trust their findings? How do we know they're anything more than just opinion, guesswork and common sense? Well, two key terms that can help us here are reliability and validity. Get to know reliability and validity well. Make friends with them and they'll be really good friends to you because you can bring them into all sorts of different methods questions. And here we're going to look at the key points you need to know about them. So first of all, what's reliability? Reliability refers to the consistency of a research study, a method or a measuring test. So if, for example, I ask people how much they think I weigh, I'd probably get lots of different answers. And some of them not very flattering. But if I step on and off some scales in a short space of time and get the same results, it's reliable. Yes, 10 stone or 140 pounds. OK. And here, a key distinction you need to make is between internal and external reliability. Internal reliability refers to the extent to which a measure is consistent within itself. And remember, this can be checked by the split half method, where the results of half the items could be correlated with the results of the other half. External reliability, on the other hand, refers to how consistently a method measures over time when repeated. And this can be assessed by using the test-retest method, correlating results obtained from participants at one time with results obtained at another time. So reliability is about consistency. And to attain a degree of reliability, data collection has to be standardised. And there has to be the opportunity to retest under the same conditions, as with a questionnaire or laboratory experiment, for example. But just because something is reliable doesn't mean it's valid. So what's validity and why is it important in psychological research? Now, in general terms, questions of validity are about whether the data represent what they're supposed to represent. But that's not the easiest idea to get hold of. So try looking at it this way. Supposing you meet someone who really impresses you. They're interesting, funny, they seem to like you and they're saying all the right things. But can you trust them? Is this person really as good as they seem to be? Well, it's much the same with questions of validity in psychological research. OK, a piece of data may seem very interesting, very relevant hypothesis or whatever, but can we trust it? Is it really what it seems to be? And to answer this, we need to get to know the data better. Check out how it was constructed. Ask a few questions. And this is what validity is really about. And so first, make sure you know the distinction between internal and external validity. Internal validity refers to whether the results are really due to factors the researchers suggest or due to something else, maybe confounding variables while external validity is about whether the results can be generalised to different environments, participants or times. And here it's important to check out you know some of the different ways of assessing or testing validity. See if you know the answers before we put them up. Face validity. This asks if the research really tests what it claims to test. For example, does this IQ test really measure intelligence effectively? Construct validity. Construct validity asks if the test relates to the underlying theoretical concepts in the research. For example, the idea that intelligence is genetic. Concurrent validity. Concurrent validity is comparing a new test or method to an existing one. For example, how does a new way of measuring intelligence relate to an established one? Predictive validity. As the name suggests, this tests whether a method effectively predicts future outcomes. For example, young children who score high in IQ tests will tend to do well at school. Ecological validity. And ecological validity asks whether the test or method produced data that will be reflected in naturally occurring situations. For example, are these results found in real-life educational settings? So, as we said at the start, no reliability and validity well. What makes them such key concepts is that they can be brought into so many different questions. And here are just three examples. Well, in the very common questions on the strengths and limitations of a particular method, whether or not it's reliable and valid is absolutely core. It's one of the first things you ask. Reliability and validity are also central to psychology and science questions. 
and they can also be used as part of the evaluation of a particular research study. But remember that reliability and validity are the goals of psychological research and in the real world it's difficult to have complete reliability and complete validity. But also psychologists sometimes have to trade one off against the other. For example, Bandura's famous Bobo doll experiments had high inter-rater reliability but lacked ecological validity. While Rosenhan's study of life in the asylums had lots and lots of ecological validity but lacked reliability as conditions were constantly changing. It's a bit like dating. Ideally, you might like someone intelligent, kind, funny, good-looking, rich and so on. But in practice, you'd be unlikely to get all these things in one person. So you'll probably end up settling for the looks. Or the sense of humour. Or maybe the money. OK, so in summary, what do you need to know about reliability and validity? Well first, bottom line, make absolutely sure you've got good definitions of each concept. And don't make the mistake that even some textbooks make of saying validity means something is true. Because what's true today might be false tomorrow. Make sure you can explain the difference between internal and external reliability and validity. Know the different types of validity and relate them to relevant examples. For a really good answer, you need to do a bit more than this. Well, a good definition is essential, but you can go that bit further by demonstrating that you understand that questions of reliability and validity are about questioning the data, testing it, seeing how much confidence we should have in it. And remember, as in life, you can't always have it all, and sometimes researchers have to give precedence to reliability over validity, and vice versa. So good luck with your revision, and don't forget to check out our other Shortcuts to Psychology revision at shortcutstv.com.